Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Dragon Ball Nation. Now today we'll be discussing all of the Super Saiyan forms. Um, really, I'm just gonna be talking about Super Saiyan one, two, three, God and four. Uh, I'm not gonna touch upon like False Super Saiyan and uh, the new form as I haven't even seen Fukatsu no F yet, so I'm not gonna be talking about the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. But that form is all pretty self-explanatory in itself. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about these forms, you know, give a little brief description and, uh, you know, share my thoughts on my opinions and, you know, thoughts on how the forms are achieved. So let's get right into this video. Now, Super Saiyan 1 is the first form we've seen in the series. We saw Goku transform against Frieza and uh, the Super Saiyan was originally bound to a warrior that was uh, a part of a legend, the Super Saiyan of legend that Vegeta had spoken of, uh, who was consumed by his own power. And the first time I see a Super Saiyan in the series, like I said, was when Goku fought Frieza and turned Super Saiyan after Krillin's death. And um, Super Saiyan has been stated by Goku to be from a need, not a desire. It's it's not from a want, it's from a need. It's a necessity to transform. And what I've always wondered about Super Saiyan, and it's not exactly clear, um, even though it's not canon by most fans, episode of Bardock, we do see Bardock, who is a very weak warrior, does turn Super Saiyan. As I said, I don't consider it canon. Many fans do not, but I've always wondered, is it really a specific power level that you need to be at to go Super Saiyan? Do you need to be of a very high strength? It's unclear exactly. It may just be that desire that you need to really push yourself to that next level. Um, but I do like to think that you would need to have a pretty powerful, uh, quote unquote, base form to transform, but it's not really uh, clear necessarily. Now the next form I want to talk about is Super Saiyan 2. This one gets a little bit more interesting. Because Super Saiyan 2 is kind of um, exhausted through kind of rage or e intense progression in your Super Saiyan form. It's ascending those different levels to get to that point. You don't really necessarily have to need to have those Ascended Saiyan levels like the Ascended Super Saiyan and the quote unquote Ultra Super Saiyan. Uh, Gohan was never really shown to use those and he had his uh, full potential, well not necessarily full, but he had a bit of potential unleashed to go Super Saiyan 2. And it's kind of a drastic rage-induced build-up to kind of transform for Gohan. For Vegeta, it's unclear. He kind of just was shown to get it over the seven-year gap. A lot of people think he got it when he had the Majin boost. I think otherwise. I think he definitely got through training. Goku as well had gotten it through training in the other world. So it's not exactly clear the exact requirements, but it does seem that can be achieved uh, through rigorous training as well. Um... So it's definitely interesting, but it can also be brought up by Rage that we've seen as Gohan. But Gohan was kind of on the brink of Super Saiyan 1 and 2. He just needed that little push. Um, but yeah, I want to move on to Super Saiyan 3. Super Saiyan 3 is a very interesting one that I want to talk about. Super Saiyan 3 is kind of a mixed bag because we only see in the series Gotenks and Goku use it. Goku would have never have achieved this form if he was not in the other world, in my opinion. If he never had gone to the other world to push his body to the very, very brink and limit, he would never have achieved this form, I don't think. Um, this is why you don't see Vegeta achieving it. He can't push himself to that far. And truth be told, at this point in the series, Vegeta doesn't need Super Saiyan 3 anymore. So Goku just achieved it like that in the other world through the rigorous training, and he could barely withstand it in the living realm, I guess. Gotenks is an interesting case because the reason Gotenks kind of uh, grasp it is because he felt Goten and Trunks felt and knew the power of Super Saiyan 3, so they kind of could push themselves to that limit in the time chamber with their immense potential. Um, and I think it was really through training that very powerful fused warrior that they could really push themselves because that warrior was much stronger than even Goku, in my opinion, and I've given evidence to support that in other videos. So that's the reason they could go that level. Uh, Super Saiyan 3 is very interesting because there's arguments to be made that you need to have a strong Super Saiyan 2 form. Uh, this is why people like to argue that Goku was stronger than Vegeta when he was Majin. Um, you know, I've made a video in the past about this. People say that Goku had Super Saiyan 3 under his belt, and that's true. But that doesn't necessarily mean Goku Super Saiyan 2 was stronger. Um, it does seem like they were pretty even in the anime, in the manga. He, they were pretty evenly matched. It seemed like they were both going all out. Goku didn't necessarily have a stronger Super Saiyan 2 form, um, although he actually did, but the Majin boost gave him more energy. So it's not that you have to have a Super Saiyan 2 form that's stronger, because Gotenks was implied to have just skipped over Super Saiyan 2. 
it's a different type of ascendance than Super Saiyan 2 is. Super Saiyan 2 is an enhancement of Super Saiyan 1, and Super Saiyan 3 is going even further beyond that. It, you don't have to have Super Saiyan 2, but it would help, I would assume. Now moving on to the non-canon realm, as most people believe. GT, Super Saiyan 4, is a transformation that's my favorite in the entire series, and I always loved the way it was achieved. You had to have been, uh, you know, had to have had a tail, and I always looked at it as that you had to have been a very strong Super Saiyan 1. Um, you just had to be a very powerful Super Saiyan. You don't necessarily need the other forms, just Super Saiyan in my opinion, because you need to be able to go Great Ape and have the Super Saiyan ability. That's why they have the Golden Great Ape. That's the way I always looked at it, and that's the way I interpret it. And I think that's a very interesting way to kind of describe the form and, you know, play it out in the series. That I really liked the backstory of Super Saiyan 4, even though it kind of came out of nowhere, but it didn't really have a lot of problems for me. I do know there's some people that have problems, I'm not sure exactly what their problems with that is. Um, and there's a lot of debate on whether or not you need to be a pure-blooded Saiyan to go Super Saiyan 4. I do not know where people are getting that from. If you guys have something to say in the comments, I'd love to hear it because I'm not sure people get that from... Maybe I'm missing something. All it seems you need to have is a tail as well as being able to be a strong Super Saiyan. Um, so hypothetically, you know, Gohan, if he had his tail, he could have gone Super Saiyan 4. Goten Trunks, if they had tails, they could have gone Super Saiyan 4. I don't think you really need to be pure-blooded Saiyan, even though the only ones we saw go Super Saiyan 4 were pure-blooded. Um, but moving on to the final one, Super Saiyan God, which is pretty much the most recent form we've gotten. In the series, aside from the one we've gotten in Fakats No F. Super Saiyan God is when, you know, five Saiyans instill their power, they hold hands and instill their power into the uh, person in the center. That person was being Goku in Battle of Gods. And it's unclear if you need to be Super Saiyan for that transformation. I would say no, I don't think you need to have any sort of Super Saiyan transformation because it looks like it's kind of an addition to your base form, almost in a way when you absorb the godly key, it gets brought into your base form, but you're not as strong as your god form. Um, and I have a theory about that in a video coming up. But it does have an interesting thing to it because it was a form used by a warrior long ago. There was an old Super Saiyan God, and I can't imagine that there were six Super Saiyans that, you know, all use their power together. I can't imagine there being six Super Saiyans at once because it was apparently, according to the legend, once every millennium. And the problem I always had with the Super Saiyan God form is that you have to be pure of heart Saiyans. And I can't even imagine that there were six pure hearted Saiyans at one time that were at a decent strength, I guess, um, to instill their power. But I'm not even sure what the strength requirements are. It's all very confusing and it wasn't described very well. But Super Saiyan God was a form that I always had problems with in terms of its backstory. That's why I like Super Saiyan 4's backstory much more. I thought that made a lot more sense. But um, I do like Super Saiyan God, but it still is my least favorite transformation. But I don't hold any biases against it. Uh, it is my least favorite, but I still do enjoy it. I do like the design, but I thought there could have been some tweaks here and there. But, uh, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say, guys. Uh, I have some videos planned for the future regarding the new Super Saiyan form that I'm going to talk about. So stick around for that. I hope you enjoy this little discussion. It's kind of something I just thought of and wanted to talk about and share my thoughts on. Uh, let me know what you guys think of each form. One, two, three, four, and God. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to list off what you think of them. You know, maybe rank your favorite forms bottom to top, you know. Uh, mine would probably go Super Saiyan 4 at the top. Then Super Saiyan 1, 3, 2, and then God at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this little discussion. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.